Teaching English to Southeast Asia definitely was a short-term thing, but what happened next wasn't what I expected. Moving abroad typically starts off the same. Step one, pack and move abroad. Step two, hit every tourist spot as unsober as possible. And step three, get a job, rinse and repeat. Most of us that travel abroad live through this situation. And for you guys that come out here to Southeast Asia, this is pretty much guaranteed how you're going to go, male or female. The problem though is in teaching English and getting paid, you will get burnt out. And I was no exception to that. And granted, teaching has taken me all over Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia. I've seen places that people have never heard of. I talk to Vietnamese about cities I've lived in, I've traveled to, and they just look at me dumbfounded like, that's the thing. So there's definitely that aspect of travelability and just exploring something that we're just not used to being from the West. And during this time, I made tons of friends. I made massive amount of connections and I created these stories and these life experiences that makes for some of the coolest stories when I'm out with friends. But despite all this fun, all these connections, all these new friends, it finally got to me. And I got bored, I got stressed, I got frustrated with the classroom environments, the cheating, the chaos, the rinse and repeat of drinking and waking up confused. It all finally got to me and I broke. Now the problem with living in Southeast Asia for a lot of people, including myself, is there's very few options for what we can actually do out here. It's usually you're a teacher or you're a tourist. There's really no middle ground that's easily accessible by a lot of people. Unless you're a lawyer or an engineer, there's no real way to stay here long-term. Unless you're willing to throw the towel and get married, now I will say a lot of people out here do try to do the latter and they try to open a company. This could be a Tefl center. This could be a motorbike alarm system. This could be some kind of coffee shop or this is some kind of bar. And I will say out of all these types of jobs I've seen Western people do throughout the years, well, the decade rather, if you're going to open a company in Southeast Asia, definitely a bar is probably the best way to go. Find the best location, find where the Western people go. And as you, as the owner, as a native English speaker, you will have some of the highest traffic. I know so many people in Laos that do this. A lot of people in South Vietnam that do this. A lot of people in Bangkok, Thailand areas that do this. And they're quite successful, actually more successful than people that open English centers or do anything else. Now, opening whatever business you decide to do is not a bad idea. It is a risk and it is something you have to plan for. Myself, I ended up opening two separate English centers. I didn't go the bar route. And I have to say, I was lucky, especially with the timing of when I did all this. My first school, I was able to sell to a larger English center for a large amount of money, which set me free to do the South to North Vietnam bike ride for like three months. But this led me to opening my second English center, which is still open to this day, that is focused mostly online. And it helps Vietnamese students learn English effectively fast. And it helps Western people learn Vietnamese extremely fast. So ideally you could say, I am like the Vietnamese version of Mark Cuban. I'm a billionaire. Now, granted, that's in Vietnamese dumb, but that's just semantics. Now, granted, I had two successful English centers out here. This doesn't mean it always works. This isn't how it works for most people. So if you are going to do this, you have to have a plan. When I first opened my first center, my second center, I had a plan. I had an agenda. I had programs created. I had ideas on what I was going to do. I already knew who the competition was and how they were working and how they were operating. I worked from within at some point, right? So I had what I needed. 2024 20, beyond, English centers, uh, probably not the best thing to do anymore because English isn't required in a lot of these countries, including Vietnam. Again, I think the best business you can actually start is probably a bar. I know that sounds lame, but it just brings the most traffic. Vietnam, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, these are tourist traps. So why wouldn't you offer the best product for tourists? Alcohol. Now, if you don't know what to actually do, my advice, make friends with AI. Start asking questions, start feeding it what you know, what you want to do, what your goals are, where you are, and find out what the rules are and what you need to do to get started. And this will prompt you for information, more information about you that will help the AI understand what you're trying to do and what you have to work with. And it'll be able to help you develop a business plan and an idea that will most likely fit best in the country you're in. Trends change, people change. So definitely take advantage of the AI and find out what's going on. Research these countries. Start doing it as soon as you get here, or at least within the first few months. It's better to make this side job, this new business venture, a hobby, and then gradually break it into an actual business. When I started my first school, I was still working. And once I was ready to open my doors, I quit my job. Gave them my notice, like it was like 60 days in advance. I quit and I started doing my own thing. So 
make it a hobby. Don't just make this idea and open this company. My first school took like probably like five or six months to actually get open. So if I had to live on five or six months of not working, it would have been hard possibly financially, but also with my visa situation. How am I going to stay in a country I'm trying to open a business in when I can't even stay in the country? So do this stuff before you actually start throwing everything aside and quitting your jobs. And I've said this many, many times, make a three to five year plan. I will put an overlay on the screen of what three year plan I typically use. So fill out this business plan, take some time, take a couple hours, take a couple weeks. I think my three year business plan took me about, about a month and a half to fill out because I had to figure out the situation of what was required in this country, what finances were required, what I needed to do to legally do this, what I had to process, what was required, what, the other schools were doing that was so bad what was so good and i created this business plan off of it so have a three to five year goal for yourself what are your goals you have to have this goal so many people come out here with this idea i'm gonna do this okay how well, i don't know and on top of that when you do come out here have money set aside don't come out here broke try to get a teaching job thinking that this idea like Vietnam and Thailand are cheaper than the West. So they could get by on like five, $600 a month. You can't really come out to Vietnam and just live on $600 a month. You really can't, not as a tourist. You have to have connections. You have to be within this system. You have to have a job out here, right? You have to have local friends. You have to know where to rent. You don't go to an agent and rent an apartment. That's gonna cost you eight or $900 a month already. Definitely have some money saved so you can build that community while you're out here. The worst thing you could do is move out here, working for 10 years, going from a computer chemical engineer at a microprocessing company to being a professional babysitter for 10, what, seven to 10 years, and then trying to take that back to America to get an engineering job, they're not going to hire me. So when you come out here, have that plan, have that money saved and start hustling through it. You need to know what you're doing when you come out here. Hanoi, Saigon, Bangkok, Phuket, are the main cities that I see, even the local people are struggling to get by right now. So you come in here as a non-citizen with no idea what's going on, not understanding the culture, is going to make it tenfold harder for you. So have your plan, have your money saved, start making actions, start making connections before you actually go through this plan. So when you do come out here, try to reconsider the three-step program of packing your bags, going to every tour spot as unsober as possible, and then rinse and repeating all this stuff. Try skipping step two. Come out here, learn the community, learn the people, get a job, and start planning for something of your own while you're out here. Everybody's trying to live in Asia because it's cheaper. Everybody's trying to live in Asia because it's a new option from the West. But coming out here, having no idea what you're trying to do, no idea the culture of the people, is going to set you on a flight right back home broke. So make something out of it and have your plan. And if you have any questions about starting a company in Southeast Asia, leave a comment below or send me an email. I'd love to talk with you. I'll give you some two cents here and there. Also go back in the video and screenshot that three-year plan. Start filling that thing out. Start planning for what you want to do out here. And if you're already out here in Southeast Asia, you're watching this video, you're like, man, I'm about to lose my teaching job. I'm feeling the heat. I'm feeling the pressure. Everybody around me is getting laid off. You really need to sit down tonight and get that three-year plan done. Hit the members button below. Join. Start asking the questions. I leave a lot of content in the members only that help people find how to start jobs, where to live, where to travel, where to be a teacher. All that stuff is covered in there. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching. I will see you again.